Welcome to Growing Deeper. I'm Reverend Michael Jakes. You know, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 10 that the Spirit searches the deep things of God. On our program, it is our desire to bring you to those deep places through a careful study and inspection of God's Word. So join us right now as we grow deeper in the Word of God. May God bless you. Well, so glad you could join us. This is lesson number seven in our series on the ministry of the Holy Spirit. This lesson is entitled, The Speaking Gifts of the Holy Spirit. Our objectives will be to identify the five speaking gifts. We will define the speaking gifts and distinguish between the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. Our key verse is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 18, which says, But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased him. Now as we introduce a subject, five gifts have been given the title of speaking gifts because they all involve speaking out loud. The five speaking gifts are prophecy, teaching, exhortation, the word of wisdom, and the word of knowledge. The first two speaking gifts, prophecy and teaching, are similar to two of the special gifts, but the speaking gifts of prophecy and teaching are not the same as the special leadership gifts of being a prophet or a teacher. Let's talk about prophecy. Prophecy in general refers to speaking under the special inspiration of God. It's the special ability to receive and communicate an immediate message of God to his people through a divinely anointed utterance. We did discuss this in detail in a previous lesson on the gift of being a prophet. And everything said there about prophecy given by a prophet also applies to the gift of prophecy. As we previously learned, God has set prophets who also have this special gift of prophecy in special leadership positions in the church. Although they prophesy like prophets, people with the gift of prophecy do not have necessarily the special leadership position of a prophet. They simply deliver special messages under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Let's talk about teaching. Spoken about in Romans chapter 12, verses 6 and 7, where it says, Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given us, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching. Now, also, we did cover this subject of teaching uh, in, our, in our lesson uh, on the gift of teaching. And everything that we discussed there applies to the gift of teaching with the exception of the leadership position. We said that teachers are believers who have the special ability of communicating the word of God effectively in such a way that others learn and apply what is taught. Teaching involves training, remember, and not just communicating information. So, as in the example of the prophets and prophecy, the speaking gift of teaching does not mean that a person has that special gift of being a teacher. God has set teachers who also have the gift of teaching in special leadership positions in the church. Okay, let's talk about exhortation. Also spoken about in Romans chapter 12, verses 6 and verses 8. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, he that exhorteth on exhortation. Now, Martin Luther, the great reformer, he said that teaching and exhortation differ from each other in that teaching is directed to the ones who do not know but exhortation to those who do know. That's from Martin Luther. The gift of exhortation is the ability to draw close to individuals in time of need, counseling them correctly with the word of God. Let me give you a further definition. These are individuals who are gifted to motivate and encourage other Christians to a deeper faith and dedication to Christ a fuller manifestation of the Spirit, and 
to a more complete separation from the world. The word exhort literally means to call a person aside, to advise, to recommend, to admonish, to encourage, to comfort. It, it's to counsel someone. People with this gift minister words of comfort and consolation and encouragement in such a way that people are helped. Now, a modern term for this particular gift would be the gift of counseling or even the gift of encouragement. Exhortation was part of the apostles' follow-up plan for the churches. We read in Acts chapter 14 verses 21 and 22. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. The Bible teaches at least five ways how exhortation is to be done. At least five ways. Number one, as a father would his own children. First Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 11 says, As ye know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you, as a father doth his children. So as a father would his own children is one of the ways that exhortation or encouragement should be done. Number two, by giving instruction with patience. Patience. Second Timothy chapter four, verse two says, preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. With all long suffering and doctrine. Okay, when we exhort someone, when someone when someone exhorts someone, it is to be done with patience. And doctrine. That means that what they say, first of all, is coming from the Lord. It is coming from Scripture because doctrine is involved. What does the whole body of Scripture say concerning this particular instance or situation or circumstance? It's not just saying what you think. It's not just giving advice out of your own mind. It is exhortation from Scripture to that individual. Number three. Exhortation is to be done on the basis, as we have spoken, of sound biblical doctrine. Titus 1.9 Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and convince the gainsayers. Okay, by sound doctrine by a proper understanding and administering of the word. Once again, exhortation is not just giving uh, worldly advice, telling someone what you think they should do out of your own brain. It is not just, not just common sense. No, it is based on sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. What does scripture say? The counselor, when he speaks, must always speak as what scripture says, not their own opinion. Number four. Exhortation must be done with all authority. Titus 2.15 says, These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Now, that authority comes from the fact that God has gifted that individual to do the, what they are doing, and more importantly, that authority comes from the Word of God. The Word of God they speak, the Word of God that they are using to uh, bring to this individual or to this circumstance is the base, is the foundation of what they speak. That's where the authority is. 
by the authority of the word of God does an individual exhort or encourage or comfort. And finally, number five, exhortation is to be done more frequently as the end times approach. And it is being done more frequently as the end time approaches. Hebrews 10.25 But exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Okay? It's speaking about not uh not forsaking the assembly of us, the assembling of ourselves together, but we should be exhorting each other, and more and more as we see the day of the Lord approach. Speaking about the end. Now, for further study, the Bible gives several example, several examples of people who had the gift of exhortation and counseled others. Now, you can study these for further understanding. Of this particular gift. You have Barnabas. In Acts 11, 22 and 24. You have Judas. Not Iscariot. Judas and Silas. In Acts 15, 32. You have Paul obviously. In Acts 14, 22. 2 Corinthians 9, 5. 1 Thessalonians 4, 1. And you have Jude. In Jude 3. Now. The word of wisdom, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 8, for to one is given by the Spirit, the word of wisdom, the word of wisdom. The word of wisdom is the ability to receive insight as to how knowledge may be applied to specific needs, okay, that's talking about to specific needs, this word of wisdom knowledge word of wisdom rather now it also applies to the revelation of God's word or the Holy Spirit's wisdom to a specific situation or problem given the facts in any situation a person with this gift knows how to apply the facts and bring it to a wise solution now the word of wisdom is a divine insight into people and situations that is not obvious to the average person. Because it's God-given wisdom and it's combined with an understanding of what to do and how to do it. This gift is not called the gift of wisdom because it does not give one the total wisdom from God. Okay, It's not called the gift of wisdom. It's called a word of wisdom. It is a word of wisdom because just a portion of God's infinite wisdom is given. So it is not the gift of wisdom. It is a word of wisdom for a particular situation. Okay, so the word of wisdom does not come through education. The source of this wisdom is God. Colossians chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. To the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and the Father and of Christ, to whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Jesus Christ was called the wisdom of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 24 and verse 30. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Verse 30 says, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. It's important to note that godly wisdom is not the same as the wisdom of the world. Not the same. James uh, chapter 3 verses 14 to 17 says, But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. 
For what envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. If you do not have the gift of the word of wisdom, you can still develop spiritual wisdom. You can receive it by studying the word of God. 2 Timothy 3.15 And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Or, if you don't have the gift of the word of wisdom, you can ask God for wisdom. James 1.5 says, if, you, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Wisdom is given to those who live a godly life. Proverbs chapter 2, verses 6 and 7, For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. But remember, this spiritual wisdom available to all believers is not the same as the gift of the word of wisdom. The word of wisdom is a special ability given by God through the Holy Spirit. You can study several references made by Paul to wisdom in 1 Corinthians 2, 1-13, 2 Peter 3, 15 and 16, and 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 4-8. to Wisdom was evident in the ministry of, of Stephen in Acts chapter 6, verses 3 and verse 10. King Solomon obviously was the best example of wisdom in the Old Testament. Uh, we read about his uh, wisdom in 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 5 to 28. You could study the book of Proverbs. It was written by King Solomon and is the practical application of spiritual wisdom. You can study James 3.17, which lists the characteristics of godly wisdom. That's James chapter 3. And verse 17. You can study these examples of the word of wisdom in operation. Luke 2.40 to 52. Acts 5.26 to 33. Deuteronomy 34.9. And Exodus 36 verses 1 and 2. Now let's talk about the word of knowledge. 1 Corinthians 12, 8. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. The word of knowledge is the ability to understand things which others do not know and cannot comprehend and to share this knowledge with them under the inspiration of the Spirit. It's an utterance inspired by the Holy Spirit that reveals knowledge about people and circumstances or even biblical truth. The source of this spiritual knowledge is God. Let's read 1 Corinthians 2.11-14. to 14. For what man knoweth the things of man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things we also speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are 
foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 3 says, In whom I hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. The gift of the word of knowledge is revelatory knowledge. This means that it is knowledge revealed by God. It is not, I repeat, it is not knowledge obtained through education or study. When Jesus asked Peter a spiritual question and he answered with a word of knowledge, Jesus said, Blessed art thou, Simon bar for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. That question was, Who do men say that I am? And Peter answered, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And this is when Jesus said, Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. That was a word of knowledge. That's from Matthew 16, verse 17. The gift of the word of knowledge should be used in humility because you are not the source of the knowledge. God is the source. 1 Corinthians 8, verses 1 and 2. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing, yet as he ought to know. You can study New Testament examples of the word of knowledge. For further study, you can study Jesus in John 1, 48. You can read about Simon in Luke 2, 25 to 35. You can read about Ananias and Sapphira in Acts 5, verses 1 to 11. You can read about Peter in Acts 5, 1 to 10 and 8, 23. You can read also about Paul in Acts 27, verses 13 to 44. Observe in the passage, as we close, observe in our passage on Ananias in Acts chapter 9, verses 1 to 18. Observe how Ananias Observe rather uh, how the word of knowledge, concerning the word of knowledge, they knew where Paul was. Knew where Paul was. Knew he was praying. Ananias. Ananias knew he had seen a vision. Ananias knew he was a chosen vessel. Ananias knew he would suffer. And Ananias knew he would be a witness. No one had told him all of these things. He knew because he had been given a word of knowledge concerning Paul. Things that no one else knew, he knew because God had gifted him and gave him special insight into the life and ministry of Paul the apostle. So this is what the word of knowledge will do. So we have given you we have, give, we have given you this information on prophecy and teaching and exhortation, the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge with the hope that this will help you, encourage you uh, and inform you as to what scripture has to say concerning these particular gifts. And our prayer is that you will be greatly blessed by these, by these lessons. So join us in lesson number eight, where we, will be, where we will be discussing the serving gifts of the Holy Spirit. The serving gifts of the Holy Spirit. That's coming up in lesson number eight. But until then, this is Reverend Michael Jakes. Thanks for joining us. May God bless you.